This is The Ref Show. This is part two. Glad you could rejoin us. Uh, Huddersfield Town, we finished uh, part one on talking to former player Roger Dilks with Keith Hackett here. Uh, tenth in the Premier League. The game against West Brom wasn't without talking points involving Roger East. I mentioned uh, the sending off of Christoph Schindler, Christopher Schindler. You felt the first yellow card was harsh? I thought he could have managed it. Yeah. I think mm. where the position was, almost on the uh, touchline, um, they were both grappling, they both had a hold of each other, and uh, he could have just given a simple free kick, got on parted and got on with the game. Yeah. So yeah. that leaves him no option later in the game when, quite rightly, there's a reckless challenge and it's yeah. a second yellow. However, Roger East did spot uh, a dive, I think considered by all who saw it, mm. by a guy who's got form, let's be fair mm. on this, mm. yeah. uh, Rajiv yeah. Van Lepara, yeah. who ended up as scoring the winning goal. Great talent. Absolutely. He has got form for this. Yeah. And, and I think, um, yeah, th there was a dive, uh, but he didn't take any action. Mm. So no yellow card. Th that's, that's a problem. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the manager will probably have words because, um, you know, we don't want uh, retrospective action and things like that, where they're getting two two match bans with um, a small squad. Mm. But the goal was something else. To win a game it with was, that sort it? of goal, I could watch it all night. Caught the Huddersfield bit, uh, because for me, this is where I think the panel and the criteria for the panel is missing. I think yeah. it's inconsistent. Yeah, like I think said. all the games yeah. are televised. It's an easy task for the panel to be mm. able to say, there's a dive or a suspicion of a dive, let's review it. And if it's seen as, it, in this case, yeah. it is a dive, then let's then punish retrospectively. <laughs> and I think the system at the moment, there's too many oops to go through before the Somebody panel gets. kick in. Indeed, right. OK, South Coast on the up. Uh, Bournemouth winning at Newcastle by one mm. goal to nil and Brighton winning 1-0 at Swansea. A lot of 1-0s in the Premier League at the weekend. The referees in these cases were Paul Tierney and Mike Dean, who both came through pretty well. I think you'll agree. Mm, yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Tierney is a good referee. I, I, I'm really pleased that Brighton are doing well because as a club, you know, they were on yeah. the, on, on the, on, on, uh, almost dead, weren't they, financially, yeah. to come back. But they've got one of my favourite players, Chris Houghton, who I think oh. is genuinely a, a great guy. He was to referee, and he comes across so so well, doesn't he? Yeah. As a manager, he's seen, yeah. wherever he's been, he's been successful. A couple of little nitpicks, I suppose, well more than that. Dwight Gale uh, scoring for Newcastle or netting for Newcastle, he was actually level. He wasn't offside, no, uh, no. so that should have been allowed. Should have been a goal. And then uh, Swansea Brighton, there was a bad uh, challenge by a Swansea player that only got a yellow card in Should there. Should have been red. Should have been red. Right. Mm. Clean sheets. There were a couple of them doing a housey, as we call it, on this programme. Uh, Lee Probert, uh, Southampton nil, Burnley won. Sam Vokes with a, a late goal. Um, the other one was pretty eventful because it's a, a shared clean sheet. This was in Stoke 2, Leicester 2. Uh, Bobby Madley starts the game. John Moss finishes it in the middle because Madley gets injured. Mm. Well, I'd like to compliment Madley. I think it, it's the most difficult thing when you're injured in, during a game yeah. to decide when to come off. Yeah. Mm. And, and in fairness, I think it was great maturity for him to say, right, I'm coming off. It's not an easy decision that for him to make, although he might be in a pain. I think most of us say, oh, we'll carry on. Mm. Yeah. But, he, but he made that decision. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, they got an experienced referee in form, as Moss is. I've been critical of him. Mm. But all of a sudden, you know, he's doing what Roger East needs to do, and that is don't look for trouble. No. Trouble will find you. <laughs> and he's now gone on this, this thing that he's raised his threshold before he finds the need to hit a yellow card. And he's finding suddenly he's coming out at the end of a game no. without one. Yeah, and, he's, he's and he's coming away with praise. So I think in recent weeks yeah. he's, he's, he's done something. Yeah. He's changed his management style of the yeah. game. And I think that's proving dividends. And he's getting respect from the players. Yes. Mm. If you manage players effectively, they'll respect yeah. you more. Correct. So well done again to, mm. to John Moss. Mm. In the Championship, no, we've not had uh, too <clears> many... Uh, instances this season of Neil Warnock going off on one. No. Uh, his Cardiff City side has been doing terrifically well in the, in the Championship. But here was an occasion where you've studied this game yeah. and he did go off on one. Yeah. Uh, Cardiff losing 2-1 at Bristol City where Omar Bogle had a straight red at 1-1. But Warnock was upset 
that he felt the worst challenge of the game was by Bristol City's Marlon Pack, uh, which would have been a second yellow and was ignored completely. The referee there was Mike Jones. Yep. Uh, and there's not many times that you would get someone like me defending Neil Warnock. Right. I mean, I've known Neil a long time. We've played and refereed and so forth. But I've got every sympathy with him on, on Saturday. Um, it's just after half time, about 48 minutes. So has the referee come out and got focused or is he just going through the motions? You ask yourself the question. But there is a reckless challenge. He's in a poor position, he's looking through players, but <clears throat> somebody's got to see those. Yeah. And Neil's absolutely spot on. That would have been a second yellow. He'd have gone. He wasn't complaining about his own player and the severity of that challenge which was reckless with excessive force. He agreed that that was a red card. It was just so, the inconsistency. So all credit to Neil for being able to balance, you know, the, two. balance the two. But mm. Well, here's another instance where we can actually defend a referee over what was a controversial mm. judgment. This was Tony Harrington in Burton's 1-0 mm. victory mm. at Millwall, where Jed Wallace uh, had a straight uh, red for a uh, challenge at 0-0 in that game. And Neil mm. Harris, the Millwall manager, wasn't happy. Uh, he thought just a late tackle. Nigel Clough even said he was surprised at the red card. Mm. Now, I've seen this, you've seen this. Um, I'm surprised at the reaction of the managers in this and, and I'm I'm of the same ilk. Um, when, when I was watching this game and um, I saw, first and foremost, Tony Harrington had an excellent position. The um, Burton player was striding away and Wallace chases him. The ball is nowhere near the challenge. It's his uh, straddling leg behind him and he just literally goes right through him. Mm. Now, there is, it's reckless for a start off. It endangers the safety of the player because he can't protect himself in any way. He doesn't even know it's coming. Mm. And it's around about the ankle area where he takes him out. So it's dangerous. So, it, you know, it's dangerous. So it ticks all the boxes for me. So, you know, Tony Harrington, take a bow. Okay, but it's, it's nice actually to hear an opposition manager, in this case Nigel Clough, even though it's kind of gone for his team, yeah. empathising with, with, with the opposition manager. Yeah, but... they've got to play each other again though later on in the season. <laughs> right. they, you know? <laughs> um, I saw Sheffield United 4 Hull 1. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the Blades are absolutely rampant, relentless, call it what you will. A brilliant, brilliant performance. There was one thing though where I, Hull had a good go in the first half, well, 1 0 up, and it certainly looked to me like there was a handball that Sheffield United got away with, mm -hmm. which would have been a penalty. Uh, to Hull, given the opportunity. And this was uh, Darren Bond in charge, but Leon Clark with four goals in 35 minutes. Incredible. I don't think I've ever seen a player score four goals in such a yeah. narrow time. I mean, I, I watched the game, uh, not this particular one, but I watched an earlier one on television and I thought, wow. He, I mean, the, Chris Wilder is just like, I mean, as a Blade fan, mm. yeah. he, just, he just brought everything, <laughs> the passion and everything, <laughs> to the game. He had overlapping centre-backs. And, and you go, <laughs> wow. In this game. You know. They were terrific. Uh, new, new speakers are now, so we can't. Yeah, yeah, that's that. why I didn't come in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, total non event, really, of a Tees Weir derby. Middlesbrough won Sunderland nil for, for Jeremy Simpson. Well done to him. FA Cup, finally. Roger, anything to pick up on? Yeah, um, big talking point for me uh, in, in this round of the FA Cup is the number of referees and assistant referees who uh, ply the trade on the National League, which is one below Football League. And there were quite a number of them out across this round, which is absolutely superb. This is what we've been advocating mm. at You mm. Are The Ref for ages and ages. Mm. And fortunately, you know, there were a number of them out um, this weekend. So, you know, well done. And seem to have done well. And yeah, I, you know. I mean, I, I, I was at Shore Lane. Uh, V Mansfield. I, I mean, it's a remarkable rise. Shore Lane, six years ago, five, six years ago, a Sunday morning pub team, really. <laughs> uh, and uh, through the investment of a guy who owns Aquaforce, um, the chairman, and his enthusiasm, um, he's, he's brought the club through the northeast counties into the, into the uh, North, Northern Premier League. And mm. I, it's remarkable. I mean, full house. Um, the pitch, I mean, people were saying, well, it took me an age to find it. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was sat next 
to John Helm, mm. a colleague of yours, great mm. commentator, and he said it took me an age to find it yeah. as well. Yeah. But uh, the, the great credit <clears> to Shoreline. They, they put up a great fight. Terrific from Mansfield. I thought the... Um, I mean, I sat near the, the, the board of directors and all that. I don't mingle with them. They don't know me, and I don't necessarily know them. But uh, they took it seriously. Mm. And, uh, and, and Shoreline put up a great, great, great. Uh, game. The one thing that I really admire was the fact that here's a club, amateur club in effect, semi-professional, could have had quite a bit of revenue from the advertising of a sponsor. Yeah. And they decide to go with the foundation that they've set up Marvelous. for their player that, that died last year. I thought that was a fantastic piece of tribute from great, the club chairman. Great spirit of uh, football uh, yeah. and humanity in the FA Cup. Yeah. Well said, Keith, yeah. Roger, thanks very much indeed. Thank you for watching. Another Ref Show next week. We'll see you then.